Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> than our own minister Kenneth Victory. Amen. 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 This brother has been faithful, been diligent. Uh, in, the, in, the hot, in the warmer summer months, he's my prayer partner when we walk the communities and we will pray. Thank God for his, for his diligence, for his dedication. Even when he's out of town, uh, he makes his way back. And I thank God for him. Uh, he's, 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 a, he's a brother. He's a man of God who loves the Lord. I love, I, I love his participation on Wednesday nights. He's my inquisitor. I love the questions he asks. He, he, he's not picking, but he's asking good, good, solid, strong questions. Questions that most of us are thinking about but never say. I love the fact that he asks those questions with the desire to want to expand that, expand the discussion. I thank him for that. I thank God for him. Let us stand to our feet and praise God for the vessel that he's going to use this morning. And our own.
I want to give honor to, to my fellow yokesmen. I want to give honor to all of the saints of God. I want to give honor to Dr. Vicki McBride. Right, right, wrong, or indifferent, that's the one that holds me down. I'm, I'm kind of emotional right now because as you can see, there's a whole lot of victory in this place. For those who don't know, my name is Minister Kenneth Victory. I have been a disciple of the upper room because this house has no members. This house has disciples. I have been a disciple of the upper room Christian Cathedral for about two years now. I did not know that they were showing up today. I thank God for, for all my children are here. I have three children. All my children are here. My oldest, Nakia. My second oldest, Brianna. And my only son, Delante. My grandchild is here, which you've seen before she's been here a time or two. Gray, Simone, is here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say it. My other grandchild is here. Y'all may, may be wondering why I'm saying my other grandchild is here. Her name is Indigo Simone. And she's, she's with my oldest daughter right now. Father God, I ask that, that, that this sanctuary, Lord Father God, be consecrated and set apart for, for the delivering of your word. And Lord Father God, I ask that it fall on fertile ground. Lord Father God, let us, let us take that word, Lord Father God, and, and let us use it for the upkeep of your kingdom. All these things we pray in the precious name of your darling son, Jesus. like to do a Bible affirmation. So at this time, I'm going to ask everyone to stand. 
I'm sorry. And look to your screens and say this with me. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable Word of God. It holds my peace, my victory, my breakthrough. This is my spiritual roadmap. This is my Bible. Amen. are in the month of January in the middle of a series called Commitment. Uh, this series was uh, started off on the first Sunday by our pastor and his topic was discernment. He was followed by Elder Chris Parks and his topic was participation. So today brings you to me. My topic is purpose. As I thought about the title of this word, a number of thoughts came to my mind. I thought, the first thought I thought was, uh, what are you thinking? No, that wasn't it. Then I thought, mm, maybe reasons. No, 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 that wasn't it. I even took inspiration from Minister Diggs. And I thought, what you doing? <laughs> Those of you who are from the life, from the room, you know what I'm talking about. Not what you doing, what you doing. But um, as I thought and I thought, God brought back to my remembrance Kiss. I'm not talking about the action. I'm talking about the acronym. Keep it simple, stupid. So, I entitled this word simply purpose. Our, found, our foundational scripture will be taken from Proverbs, the 16th chapter, starting at, at the third verse. And it reads, commit thy works to the Lord, and thy thoughts will be established. As a supporting scripture, I will be using Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To every season, there is a time. A time for every purpose under heaven. We know that God is omnipotent. That is, he is all-powerful, almighty, preeminent, invincible, most high. We also know him as omnipresent. That is, he is everywhere at all times, all present, universal, infinite, and boundless. Now, when I say that he is all-present doesn't mean, doesn't only mean that he's in all places at all times. You see, see, God transcends time. 
He exists in the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. With that being said, and, and my given assignment for today, I thought to myself, if God is omnipotent and God is omnipresent, if God is all things at all times, what is God's purpose? Hmm. What is God's purpose? I asked this question of several people to try to understand and gauge their position on the subject. And I came up with a multitude of answers. Some said his purpose was to create. Others said his purpose was to guide his creation. Some say it was to establish order and peace. Some say it was to be worshipped. And some said his purpose was simply to love. After all, God is love. After weighing all the responses, I came up with my own answer for God's purpose. And that is, God's purpose is to be. Keep it simple, stupid. God's purpose is to be. Isaiah 55, uh, verses 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Now, because God, God's ways are higher than, than, than our ways, and God's thoughts are, 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 are far greater than our thoughts, they are far greater than, than we could ever understand. I had to break it down so that my, my finite mind could try to understand the infinite mind of God. This is what I came up with. What God revealed to me that his purpose is triune. Just as he is triune. That is, God exists in the form of a trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each entity has a purpose. Let's look at the Father's purpose. Genesis 1-1 tells us, In the beginning God created heaven, and the earth. God's purpose is to create and to guide his creation. Let's look at the son's purpose. John 1, verses 1 through 3 tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the word was the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. In the beginning, he, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made. This establishes the Son's presence as an entity within the Trinity from the beginning. John 1, 
verses 4 and 5 goes on to say, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This establishes the reason for his purpose. This will become a little bit clearer later on in this message. John 1, verses 10 through 13, goes on to say, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world knew him not. He came down to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be children of God. To those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. These verses reveal that the son's purpose was to reconcile. Now last, but certainly not least, we have the Holy Spirit. John 16, 7 tells us, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. King James, ref King James Version refers to the Holy Spirit as a comforter. The New King James refers to him as a helper. Acts 1, verses 7 and 8 tells us, he, he, And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So we see the Holy Spirit's purpose is to be a helper and to give power and comfort. Now, we've tried to uh, look at God's purpose as to be. Using our finite mind in an effort to understand, we have broke it down to the purposes of individuals which make up the triune God. What we call the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But what about us? Mm -hmm. What about our purpose? Well, if you look at man from, from our inception, God has purposed us in the beginning to have dominion. In Genesis 1.26, God says, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over the, all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So our first purpose was to rule. But you see, man's purpose changed in the garden when he disobeyed God. See, God gave him instructions as to how he was to move, to behave, to, to also rule. 
He gave man a list of do's and don'ts, a list of wills and will nots. But man disobeyed God when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For God said, the day that you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. You see, man was deceived into believing that he knew more than God. If you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, surely you won't die. But once again, we cannot understand what God understands. We cannot know what God knows. You see, when God said that you will surely die, he did not mean that you will physically die. What he meant was that you will spiritually die. Mm. You see, it was at that moment that man went from being an executor to being an, a laborer. In other words, God went from being provided for to having to provide. It was at that moment that he broke covenant with God. Now man's purpose became to reestablish covenant with God. Now that we've established man's collective purpose, we must understand that every man has a personal purpose. And our personal purpose is, is, is tied to our experiences, our decisions, our trials, our tribulations, and our testimony. The word says in Revelations 12, 11, that they overcame him, that being the evil one, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Like I said, I've been in this, I've been a disciple in this ministry for a couple years now. And um, when I came to this ministry, I, I gave my credentials to, to Pastor Jay. And, and when I gave my credentials to Pastor Jay, I told him, Pastor, I'm giving you my credentials. But I've always believed that my pulpit was not hewn wood, or in this case, fabricated metal. My pulpit has never been hewn wood. My pulpit has always been concrete and asphalt. Which, which, what I really meant to say is, don't put me in the pulpit. <laughs> There's a reason why I made that statement. And to, to, to show an example of, of, of why I made that statement, I'm going to give you a little bit of my testimony. I have, uh, like I said, been in this ministry for a couple years now. But to, to understand, and I've talked to some people, I've talked to some of the disciples here at, at the upper room, and, and some of you know a little bit about me, but you don't know all about me. 
I ain't always been this person. Really? <laughs> Minister Jim knows. I ain't always been this person. We're going to start from the very beginning. I was born and raised in Springfield, Massachusetts, where I went to school, played sports, tried to play football. Graduated from high school, barely. When I graduated from high school, uh, I got a little part-time job in a restaurant cleaning up in the morning, um, two, three, four hours in the morning. And I would come home. After, a, after about a few months of that, my father came to me and he says, son, I'm going to give you three choices. He said, either you go to school, either you join the service, or I'm going to put you through a wall. <laughs> but you're not going to sit around in my house and do nothing. I chose choice number one. I applied to the community college in, 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 my, in my hometown, Springfield Technical C Community College, because it's the only place that I could get into. So I matriculated through, that, through that, that institution, and I got my associate's degree and realized that I, I needed to further my education. That's when I applied to Howard University. On age, you. I got my baby girl in here. She graduated from Howard, too, so I got some backup. So uh, I, I, I applied to Howard University, and I was just, I, I was, I was denied entrance into Howard University. I was heartbroken. It was the only school I applied to. It was the only school I wanted to go to. Now, my children's mother, who was my girlfriend at the time, she said, well, why don't you just call them? And I said, well, I need to call them. They just told me they don't want me. Why, why should I call them? She said, just call them. So I called them and I said, mm, you know, I, I, I went to community college, I brought my grades up, I brought my GPA up, how come I'm, I'm not accepted into your institution? And, and, and the dude said, okay, come on. <laughs> I was shocked, I was like, Lord have mercy. I said, well, 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 well. Can, can, can I come next semester? I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. But uh, so I gathered up all of my worldly possessions and, and, and I, I put them in my 1974 Pontiac Catalina and I drove down 95 and, and, <laughs> and showed up at Howard University. I matriculated through that uh, institution and uh, went back home and proposed to my children's mother. We got married in 1985. She, I, I found a little house in Dell City to rent, and uh, I was here six months before she came down. Now, when I got to Dell City, Virginia, I did not know the Lord, but my wife did. So I set out to find a church for my wife to go to. I found a little church on Cardinal Drive, and uh, I remember the first time that we went there, I, as we walked up, I, I looked up, and then there, there was a cross, and around the cross it said, Jesus saves, and, and I was afraid to walk in. But as I pressed my way through the door, I found a b body of believers who, who, 
who accepted me for who I was, who didn't judge me, who, who, who had no, you know, no prior thoughts of, of who I was or what I was and what, what I wasn't. About three weeks later, I accepted the Lord. I worked hard in that ministry. I went hard for Jesus. I worked hard in that ministry. I was recognized, and I was chosen to be ordained as a deacon in that ministry. So I was ordained as a deacon. But, but, but you see, there was a problem with my follow. Pastor says that this is a church of exodus. Let me tell you about my ex. Let me tell you about circumstances around, around my being an ex. I would praise God with all my heart, all my will on Sunday morning. Come Wednesday, I was hitting a crack pipe. As a result, I, I was sat down, and um, I, was, I, I finally found myself at a ministry called Save the Seed Ministries in Waldorf, Maryland. A ministry dedicated to the deliverance of illicit lifestyles. Read duty. <laughs> after, I, after, I, after I finished with that, uh, I came home about four months later, and I was on fire for God. I wanted to tell everybody about this Jesus thing. But my old church wasn't having it. So I... I switched ministries, and I was told to get in line and do what I had to do, and I would, I would be licensed. Well, once again, I still had a problem with my follow. On Sunday morning, I was praising God with all my being. But still, on Wednesday, I was still hitting that crack pipe. So I was sat down. While I was at Save the Seed Ministry, I was given four words. Those four words were deliverance, restoration, excuse me, deliverance, reconciliation, restoration, elevation. If the opportunity presents itself, I will go in deeper about those four words. But right now, I've got to get through this message. I've got to get through purpose. So we're going, uh, so, so, so I'll lay that aside, and we'll come back to those four words at, at a later date. I say all of this to say that it was because of those four words, it was because of of my presence at Save the Seed Ministries that I recognized what my purpose was. And because I recognized what my purpose was, I had a direction. Now that you've heard a little bit about me, and my personal testimony, what about yours? Everyone has their own trials and tribulations and which have led you to your own testimony. Just as my testimony led me to my purpose, your testimony will lead you to your purpose. Ephesians 4.16 says, for whom the whole body joined and knit together by, 
by what every joint supplies according to the effective working which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. That means that everyone has their personal purpose. Your purpose may not be my purpose. My purpose may not be pastor's purpose. Pastor's purpose may not be Crystal's purpose. And Crystal's purpose may not be Aaron's purpose. But collectively, our purposes, our individual purposes, Joined and knit together, every joint supplying a need causes the body to grow and, mm, and edify itself in love. Just because uh, you can't preach like pastor or you can't sing like crystal or, or, or you can't move cars in the parking lot like Aaron or, or, or you can't usher like Miss Claudette or, or Miss Glenda or, or maybe you can't praise like Miss Nene or, 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 or shout like, Miss, like Spencer. That, that doesn't mean that your purpose doesn't have a place within the body. It doesn't mean that, that, that your purpose is any smaller or any bigger than anyone else's. It means that your purpose is your purpose and it supplies a need. Yes, when I speak, I like for it to be an interactive experience. So I'm going to ask, that all the ministers of God raise your hand. Amen. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Everybody knows that verse. What you don't know is verse 18. Verse 18 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled himself, has reconciled us to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And has given to us a ministry of reconciliation. Now, if God has given you a ministry of reconciliation, he has made you a minister of reconciliation. Now, don't get caught on that word minister. To, be, to minister simply means that you must serve. So, to be a minister of reconciliation means that you must serve reconciliation. So, what does that mean to serve reconciliation? To serve reconciliation means that you must go to someone who is where you were and reconcile them back to Christ. Now, I'm going to ask this question again. I would like for all the ministers of God to raise your hand. Whoa, there it is. There it is. If you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, you are a minister of reconciliation. 
God himself said in Ephesians 4.11, he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. For the equipping of the saints and for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now I'm almost, I'm almost done loading up my little red wagon and getting out your way. Now, as Pastor Jay would say, Ante. Play my Academy Award music. <laughs> so in conclusion, your purpose is tied to what your hands are doing. If you are serving reconciliation, you are putting your hands to the work of God. If your hands are doing uh, the work of God, your thoughts are being established by God. So if there is someone out there wondering what their purpose is, what is it that, that, that God wants me to do? I say, look at where you've come to know where you're going. God has a ministry of reconciliation for you. Put your hands to the work. And God will show you the let the people of God say amen. Amen. Can we give God glory for this awesome word? Amen. Can we thank God? Hallelujah. Amen. Purpose. Purpose. And yes, he did tell me. But I knew that I know that there's something in him that we needed to hear. Amen. I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, Pastor, but uh, um, when I first got here and, and, and I told Pastor that that um, that I didn't really want to come up into the pulpit, I told him that my pulpit was concrete and asphalt. Elder Chris told me something that blew my mind and has guided me ever since he told me it. I told Pastor that I had a Moses mentality. You remember that? What Elder Chris told me was, you may have a Moses mentality, but you got an Aaron inside you. And the Aaron inside you is the Holy Spirit. So if I stand up in the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit take charge, I can stand before God's people and deliver God's work. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that sounds just like Elder Chris. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If there's anybody here who doesn't know the Lord, I need you to understand this. This moment is just for you. We don't hear it a lot, but hell is a real place. The thing about the thing that you need to understand is that you don't have to go. Hell is created for Satan and those angels that followed him. The fact of the matter is, God has created us as his children to be with him 
in heaven. But you got to know who he is. And knowing him means a surrender to yourself and a receiving of the gift of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. To our, to our, to our, our, our online audience, we thank God for you being here. But here's where we're going to leave you. There's a video that's coming after leading you in the, in the plan of salvation. If you get saved, let somebody know. Drop a line in the comments and we'll, be, we'll do our best to get him back in contact with you. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Good morning, church. I've been given the opportunity to present to you today the too good to be true news of Jesus Christ. You know, the misconception about going to heaven is that a lot of people think that if I'm just a good person, then I get to go to heaven. But that's not true at all. The Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. And the only person who can counteract that wage is the blood of Jesus Christ. So if this is you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity to receive him right here, right now. If this is you, repeat after me. Say, Father, I confess I'm a sinner and my sins deserve death. But I believe Jesus, the Son of God, died for my sins. He rose three days later. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you've been born again. If this is you, reach out to us, comment below. We want to talk with you and help you in these first initial steps of a brand new life in Christ. God bless you.